Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the iFlight ProTech R25 HD. Mine is the HD version, so it's got a Cadex Vista inside. And this sort of quad is the kind of quad that most people will fly pretty flat. And they're looking to get a sort of movie, sort of slow moving cinematic sort of shot and possibly use it for other purposes. Maybe you're making a family reunion video or something like that and you're using some B-roll as those people who are doing those sorts of things. But in this video, kind of per my typical style, I'm not just going to show it flat with my GoPro Hero 6 cutting edge technology, but I'm also going to fly it a lot more aggressively in order to see, you know, what sort of capabilities it's got. So if you want to fly it and not only get that movie sort of shot, but you want to fly it more aggressively in order to get a more aggressive movie sort of shot, we'll show it in this video. But the first thing we've got to do is we've got to get down to the desk. We've got to go through all the specs, what's in the box, weigh it up, the batteries, flight times, all that stuff, and then we'll cover it up at the end. In my case, because it's HD, like I said, it requires the DJI HD goggles, the, the black goggles, none of the other goggles. They have to look like this. They're, there's new versions coming out probably sometime, but for right now, we got to have these. And it's got Express LRS receiver here in the back. So I'm flying it with my trusty RadioMaster Zorro, where that is the Express LRS edition. Uh, no module in the back. But if you're looking to transition, I would highly recommend getting the 4-in-1 and then adding an Express LRS. That's kind of makes the transition a little bit easier. But because I've got several radios, I'm just doing it this way for now. The motors on the ProTech R25 are the 1404, 4600 kV. It's got two and a half inch props, and the props are the Nazgul Sin 2025 triabulated props. As I said, mine is the HD version, but there is an analog version. The camera that they use for the HD version is the Cadex Polar, which does mean it's got a maximum frames per second of 60 frames per second. And of course, also in the HD version, you've got a Cadex Vista. No, it's not naked. You can see the heat sink plates right in there. It does come with a mount up front, so you can mount your external HD recording camera. The all-in-one flight controller down there is a all-in-one. It's an F4. It's the version 1.1 of their Whoop flight controller. It's uh, got a target of iFlight underscore F411 underscore Pro, and it has a 20 amp ESC with a burst rating of 25 amps. And we've also got black box on here. And the gyro is the BMI 270, according to the specs. But as we know, sometimes those gyros they've been changing around a little bit so uh yeah there's only one true way to tell and uh, joshua bardwell i believe made a video about that just the other day so check out his video to tell which gyro your current flight controllers all have and of course this is a usb port to that all-in-one got the typical antenna that we find with all the vista based quads down in here is the iFlight receiver and that is express lrs with the little cube antenna you can see right down in here we've got protection for our motor wires so in case your propeller got bent you might give a fighting chance of not getting chopped one of the features is the safety of the prop protection and these are quite flexible this does not feel like the kind of material that is real stiff and would break on an impact i suspect this is going to take a pretty good number of hits Probably, most likely, just do damage to our props, which is a good thing. We want to keep these nice and safe. It's also worth noting they've got a 3D print that completely encompasses the sides of the body, so your airflow isn't great, and that is going to be a concern if you're running maximum output on your Vista and you're flying in a hot area. You're going to want to get it in the air pretty quickly. We've got 3D printed skids here on the bottom. It does come with a screw that you would need for an external HD camera mount. It comes with an extra set of props. If you get the analog version, you might need these antenna tubes. It also has a battery mat. You can't see it because it's a sticky side. We have an extra battery strap. And then we have our little smorgasbord of iFlight extra screws. iFlight quads come with these little stickers that tell you it is pre-tuned to bind and fly. Just bind and fly. But it also, on that lower sticker, says it's only been tested indoors. Never plug in the battery without an antenna installed. Vista manual, motor rotation or prop installation card, safe flight card, be responsible. It does come with a BMI 270 custom target notice, which uh, gives you some details about the BMI 270 that's in there. And it also explains why some come with a B Bosch BMI 270 instead of the MPU 6000. Due to chip shortages and high prices. Yeah, everybody's having to switch due to those reasons. That notice does come in two languages. We've got the iFlight Express LRS user manual telling you how to flash if you were to need to. I didn't. I found that the receiver came with version 2 of the software. How do I know it was version 2? 
because my radio is on version two and it bound right up without flashing. So that's good. And you know what? It came with a full sheet of stickers. The R25 in the HD format weighs 150, almost 151 grams. If we add my naked GoPro, the screw, the mount, and my little harness here to plug in my naked GoPro, we get 187 and a half grams. I flew it on these two batteries, uh, the Cotter there on the green label, 4S 650 milliamp, and the RDQ 4S 850 milliamp. RDQ batteries are made by GNB if you're wondering about that. Not that I just use these two batteries, but it was these two brands and sizes of batteries that I used on my flights. With the 650 milliamp battery, it weighs 264 and a half grams. With the 850 milliamp battery, it weighs 286 grams, or just a little bit over. And because math is hard, if we take off the HD camera, we get just under 250 grams with that RDQ 850 milliamp forest battery. And just under 227 grams if we use that 650 milliamp forest cotter battery. So the HD version can come in under 250 grams if you don't add the external camera, which is important to some of you. The carbon fiber bottom plate looks to be about two and a half millimeters. And the top looks like it's two millimeters. And motor post to motor post, it looks just about 113 millimeters. The battery connector is an XT30, by the way. This flight is on the Cotter battery, the 650 milliamp forest battery. And I'm showing you this because, well, I kind of liked how it flew more aggressively on the 850, but when it came to the slower flight and I think particularly, you know, the, what I'm going to try to show you of this little house tour. I think the 650 made it a little bit more manageable. Uh, and one of the things that I noticed was the weight when I have to make small corrections and I try to make them eh, more abruptly. You know, you wouldn't want to do it, you know, in this sort of flying format, uh, but I needed to in order to avoid uh, a, a crash or a bang or something like that when I'm trying to go through the doorways and whatnot. I found the 650 milliamp battery was allowing me to make smaller corrections a little bit better. Uh, this was not a one and done sort of run. I actually did this a few times and then I went through and picked out uh, what I thought was the most interesting, wasn't necessarily the best. Uh, and again, I am going to show a fair amount of uh, aggressive flight footage after we get done with this flight. I'm gonna show that more of a picture in picture format because it isn't necessarily what this quad is designed for. But again, I do think it's important to show you that if you wonder, you know, I, I am interested in this sort of flying of getting my sort of movie shot, cinematic sort of flying, but I also might want to uh, do things that are more aggressively and can this quad do that? Uh, surprisingly, I think these companies are getting better and better at making more capable uh, sin whoops is the, the typical term that we use to describe these, you know, uh, prop protected, made to carry an external HD camera, designed around flat flying and smooth flying, but they've become much more capable over the last year. It used to be especially the bigger, the heavier ones. They're, they're probably more durable. I will give those original ones that. They're probably more durable, but the newer ones, they are uh, more capable, and we'll see that back in the picture in picture. Uh, my stats for the day. Uh, weather was actually pretty nice. That's probably why I'm using this footage because the other days was probably much more windy, but we still had wind as far as the weather data goes of seven to 10 miles an hour, but I really don't think we're feeling much of that because it felt especially calm. I remember this, this wasn't that many days ago. And you can look at the trees in the HD footage that I'm showing you and you can notice that very little movement. I've got my audio recording camera out. No, the flight audio that you're hearing is from the camera that's sitting in front of the house with me. It is not from the quad itself. Also down in the lower right, it's pretty apparent, but I draw your attention to the goggle view down there. That is what we see inside the DJI goggles. Of course, again, this is running the Caddx Pole camera which is a 60 frames per second camera with the DJI system of course you get outstanding range you've got that 50 megabits per second so you get a real nice crisp image and with Express LRS you can just fly it to wherever you want to fly it and yes I do make sure all my neighbors are aware and you probably saw the construction in the backyard and Chad was on the roof. Chad was well aware. He does have his music playing. Hopefully that doesn't get me a, a copyright strike, but I think the volume's fairly low and we can't hear it all the time. So I think that will help me not get that copyright strike. Uh, so everybody in the area is aware. I've got a little text chain and you know, make sure everybody's gonna be safe. Of course, I'm flying pretty slow. Um, Chad, um, he is he is the guy that we use for most of our projects since I kind of retired after remodeling our master bathroom. Solid dude, love working with him. He's always very patient with us. 
and um, you know he's he's a small business owner he's a single proprietor and he never does us wrong so um, oftentimes when I come home for lunch he has lunch we go over the project and we sit around and just talk shop a little bit what have you uh, so I've enjoyed uh, having Jad around and he's done great work for us and uh, he is building that outdoor living space that will have our grill and a refrigerator and a side burner and a TV and it'll have heaters in the ceiling so we can use it in the, the cooler months and it'll have a fan or multiple fans actually it's got two fans uh, but we're gonna come in here and wrap up the flight we saw the walker took a strange little look at me and there's my audio camera as we whiz by that flight was four minutes and 22 seconds so I opted to show you just pretty much the full flight of the 650 milliamp. If you fly with an 850 milliamp, of course there's a variable within it comes batteries, battery quality, battery care, all those different things. Uh, the 850 got me on average, it got me about a minute and a half more flight time. So you're, you're looking at six minutes. Uh, again, that's carrying the naked GoPro and everything as well. So uh, if you're looking at the flight time, that's what you should expect. Uh, in the top right hand corner, I think the main thing that you want to uh, kind of address as far as flight characteristics and being more aggressive is this does have, uh, let me rephrase, every once in a while on the tail end of a battery or at the back half of the battery, let's say, if you're doing a dive from a height greater than my, the chimney on my house, you can potentially get your washout. Now, when I was doing my dives, I was intentionally trying different things, like to bring up the throttle really slowly and really low. I was trying to bring it up slower and slower and slower. And basically, I'm testing to see that because that's one of the normal issues with a quad with prop protection is that you'll be doing your dive and then it'll pitch up and usually yaw one way or another kind of uncontrollably. Of course, it usually flattens out, so if we recognize that, we can get ourselves out of trouble, but it's something that we oftentimes look for. Uh, so hopefully, I've shown you in that left-hand corner some of those dives. Um, many of my dives went normally. I, I don't know how many I can have the time to show you because I also want to show you some of the other flight capabilities of the quad uh, outside of the flat, smooth, sort of cinematic style, but um, I had... Uh, I'm just spitballing. Let's say a dozen dives that went normally and two that didn't. So that should give you some sort of number. And I was using both of these batteries at the same time. Like I said, during the slower flight, I enjoyed the 650 milliamp battery, or excuse me, I enjoyed the 850 milliamp battery flying more aggressively. And when I flew slower, I flew the 650. But of course, if you're flying slower and you're trying to get your shot, you might need more than one run. So having more run time might be what you're needing. That's just my personal preference. You know, you do what you need to do to enjoy yourself or get the footage that you're looking for. Uh, one of the questions I addressed kind of early, and hopefully you didn't miss that, was it does have this TPU protection all the way around the quad, or at least the body. It's not encased in the front and the rear. It's just around the sides. So the nice thing is that if you get grass or debris or something, it's not thrown into the body of the quad. Uh, this does run props out so it would throw the debris that way so that keeps it out but from a temperature standpoint that could be a potential issue it's you know depends on how long you wait around how hot it gets and how what uh, uh, uh are you running it at 700 milliwatts are you doing the hack to run at 1200 you know how hot are you running the vtx on this little guy it keep in mind it's in case so uh, all those factors could play a role. I didn't see, as slow as my GoPro is to boot up and be ready, I did not see a temperature warning. But that was the first thing I thought of when I saw this. Now, the other side of that is maybe you're looking at this and, and you like what you see, but you want to lighten the load for more flight time or more flight capabilities. Uh, you could take that off. That's always going to save you a few grams. TPU isn't necessarily the heaviest material on Earth, but it's also not the lightest material on Earth. I talked about the prop protection already and how it's fairly flexible. Let me move that prop so you can tell a little better. So these are going to move and they spring back into shape pretty well. So I think if you hit something, if the prop protection is going to break, it's probably going to break down here on a strut. But it, I don't think, this is speculation, because obviously I didn't have enough crashes to where it would break. I did have some crashes, but <laughs> everything's fine. So I'm speculating, obviously. I think it would break a strut before it would break this part up here. So I think this is going to be fairly durable. We've got a good thick bottom plate down here, and we've got all the components pretty much housed within the confines of the quadcopter. So you don't have antennas outside of this one. Maybe you want to extend that. You do have a little bit of the tubing still down there, so you could extend this out further. 
you know, that's really not going to be necessary unless you're in a very specific case. Uh, the receiver that they have in here has got the cube antenna receiver, but I also noticed on their website that their ELRS receiver does have an antenna. So mine might be slightly different than what you see uh, when you uh, purchase one, if you were to purchase one. And you can see they've kind of enclosed it with this print, and it is wrapped with heat shrink. So you, sh excuse me, heat shrink. Uh, so shorting isn't an issue when it comes to your receiver. Uh, binding was easy enough. You know, like I said, uh, it come with version uh, 2, at the very least, of Express LRS. I can't tell you exactly which version. It bound up to my uh, Zorro radio that is running Express LRS version 2 as well. So one of the things that worried me was the USB port. Now, if I can get a good profile shot, the USB port really isn't in jeopardy. This screw head is above it. Uh, we've got these bumpers from the, the motors that are also bring it even higher. The only risk we have on the USB port is if you were to land or crash and come down on a surface that wasn't very flat or happen to be have a rock right there and you hit it at some sort of glancing angle, you know, it's very likely it might even survive that. It's all going to depend upon the, the force applied. But there is potential because the USB port is available, as it is on just about every one of our quads with all-in-ones, unless it comes off the side. You know, it's a slight risk. So if you can, uh, bring it in, land on a nice flat surface, and uh, you'll be fine. iFlight is one of those companies that does also apply. Uh, I think it's an interesting thing. They apply... Uh, thread locker to their screws so when you screw things in that you know you're relatively assured that the screws aren't going to come loose uh, matter of fact i don't have it out anymore but even the spare screws come with a little bit of thread locker blue thread locker that is uh, applied to them now to a couple things that i wasn't uh, a fan of and hopefully i'm showing that flight footage up here so you can get a better idea because i was i was fairly excited and impressed with how this thing flew in a more aggressive style you know outside of its design scope it flew pretty well you can see down here that here's a link button and i left the sticker on there just so we could well i left the sticker on there wondering if it would actually stay on there but it's kind of hard to see because it's dark so let me get a flashlight so you can see it it's right below the green arrow hopefully that helps that you can now see it but unfortunately, uh, that's the, well, the sticker says link button. It's also the USB port on there, which you may need access to for the DJI Assistant to activate it so you can actually use it. And then the link button is actually further to the left. I don't even know if I can, uh, can I get a shot of that USB port? Can you, whoops, trying to show it, trying, let me focus my light. So USB port and then the link button is actually to the left of that. Um, so I had some troubles getting my USB cable, my USB-C cable, through that hole. Uh, for two reasons. One, the distance between here, I didn't have a USB-C cable that was short enough, and I didn't have a right angle adapter. So what I ended up doing was unscrewing the motor, uh, taking the prop protection off, and then I took my soldering iron and warmed it up, and I reamed out the hole a little bit so that I could get my USB cable through there. The uh, Let me just show it to you here. This is my primary USB cable. It's pretty much a standard size USB cable, but I tried to find one that was thinner as well. Uh, I've got this gray one over here, um, about the same. And then I've got another one that I pulled out of my drawer. They, they all wouldn't fit through there. And it was just the bottom that wasn't big enough. I think there's actually the hole in general is big enough, but the hole wasn't aligned just perfectly from mine to plug right in. So I just took my soldering iron and just kind of rubbed some of that bottom edge down, and then I was able to plug in. Uh, of course, after you've activated with the DJI Assistant, then you're going to want to link them to your goggles, and then you've got to uh, take a little tool. I like to use a little plastic uh, paintbrush from one of the kids. It's probably our youngest. She's the, the one that likes to be real creative and crafty. So I take this little guy, I kind of shaved off the tip, and I just kind of pressed it in there. That worked just out fine. Uh, I didn't have a problem with the hole. I do appreciate the fact that they put the hole there. We didn't have to take the whole side plate off in order to be able to get it. And they, they obviously, they label it for us with a sticker, which is nice. Uh, one of the other things I wasn't a huge fan of was the small battery mat. And it mainly concerns me in that more aggressive flight style that if you do have an HD camera up front here that... You know, if you have any battery shifting, you don't want it moving forward. And if we could have, you know, extended the battery mat outside of just the width of the strap, you know, had it come back here a little bit to give the battery more overall rubber mat to um, adhere to 
as we're <laughs> crashing. But uh, you know, it's it's pretty small, but it is texturized. I didn't have again. I didn't have any troubles with it. It's just one of those things. After having a lot of quads and a lot of crashes, it's a little tiny thing. I would appreciate. I do like the fact that uh, iFlight, you know, takes the time to make sure their stuff is. Uh, got some sort of unique features to it when it comes to the carbon cutting. And speaking of the carbon, this carbon does, you know, we're, uh, I don't know whether to say anything about this or not. I'm not a fan of looking at carbon and then making any sort of judgments because from what I understand of talking to people who work with carbon on a daily basis or professionally, what we're looking at here, the weave as we like to say in FPV, it's nothing more than wallpaper. It doesn't show us the layers. It doesn't indicate anything about what's underneath what we can see. So take that for what it's worth. You can believe me, you cannot make your own judgments. I, I think the carbon looks strong. It feels strong. It's a very solid in the hand sort of quad, especially this body section, very stiff. And there's no like really sharp edges. Like sometimes when you get a hold of a frame and maybe the tool's a bit, worn down the edges will be real sharp to your fingers now the outside feels like it's like slightly chamfered a little bit and the inside is a little bit more sharp but not sharp like i felt on really inexpensive uh frames those tend to have really sharp edges so uh, as far as the carbon fiber and it being stiff i approve again as far as the wallpaper on the print you know make your own judgments about that sort of stuff i should mention that iflight uh, has their own batteries uh, about the same size. I think I actually have a couple of 650s, but they must not have been at the top of my bag when I was charging batteries. Uh, so you can try those out. They're called full send batteries. Um, of course, they're going to cost you more if you were to buy this kit and buy some batteries. And when you buy batteries, of course, that does change shipping. So that's something to consider. You might want to buy your quad, you know, in one order and wait 24 to 48 hours, whatever you do. Um, maybe get the quad shipping a little bit. And then if you can't buy your batteries from a local FPV shop and you want to buy batteries from iFlight, their full send batteries, then order them separately and, and have them ship separately. So it, one doesn't necessarily slow the other down because, well, I guess without batteries, you can't really fly this thing, but maybe you're just wanting to try their batteries. I wouldn't order batteries with the quad just because battery changes how the shipping is handled. You can't get air shipping with the LiPo batteries. To my knowledge, I believe that's illegal, at least shipping back to the United States. Maybe you can still do that to other countries. But uh, just know that iFlight does have their own full send batteries of this same sort of size. So the last thing to talk about is price. You know, our FPV budgets, they can be pretty rough. Uh, everybody's talking about inflation, the stock market, all these little changes. Hopefully you still got some money in your FPV budget. Uh, the HD version comes in at $309.99. So kind of where you expect it, you know, it's they're generally $130 to $150 more than their analog counterparts. Uh, therefore, their, their analog version of this comes in at $179.99. They do have kits, so if you don't already have goggles or a radio, you can buy those things together with this. Uh, as of right now, I only see these available HD and analog with Express LRS. They don't seem to have an FR Sky option or Crossfire option or something like that. We may see that come around, but as of right now, with what's on their website and other websites that I've seen for this, Express LRS... I've been telling you for what, a year? I don't know what it's been. I'm a big fan of ExpressLRS. Love the fact that we have this open source community with this smack you in the face sort of control range and feature set that is just, in my opinion, it's just great. So ExpressLRS um, is the only version they have available right now. And I don't even think you can get it without ExpressLRS. So if you wanted to add your own receiver. Because they do have a little wiring harness down in here to where you could potentially plug in a different receiver, something like a Crossfire. But you can't get it without the Express RS, not that you can't change it later. So the price of this, again, uh, 309 or 310 US dollars, uh, 180 for the analog version. And then you have, they have options there. You can buy goggles, you can buy radio, you can buy extra prop protection, extra propellers, batteries if you choose to. So uh, what do you think? And I, another question that I have for those that have watched all the way to the end, I appreciate you. Thank you for sticking around. Hopefully it's been an enjoyable, enjoyable video to watch. Is do you want to continue to see me fly quads outside of their design? 
In other words, this sort of quad is generally that's a slow, smooth flying, but do you want to see me continue to fly them more aggressively or more typically of how I fly them? I probably will continue to do it, but whether I show it or not, that's something different. You know, in case something really awesome or really bad happens, I might bring that to a video, but I'm curious. Do you look forward to that? Do you watch a video on a quad like this, knowing that when you come to this channel, you're going to see it flown more aggressively as well? I'd like to know. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise uh, about the uh, iFlight ProTech R25 HD or the analog version, I might be able to help you out with some questions there. Please let me know in the comments section below. I appreciate your time. And thanks for watching.